So your body is what? Your body is just exhausted. You just, I mean, you're up for 46 hours. Well, you're really up for longer than that because you wake up before, Friday yeah, morning, morning, you wake up, and then you're up all day Friday, you know, getting your mind right, trying to prepare yourself. And then you got to go to all the meetings that the dancers do and, you know, walk into the BJC. So you're really up for like, you know, 50 hours. Yeah. 50, almost 55 maybe. So it's, it's crazy. kind of crazy. How long have you stayed? What was the longest you ever stayed? Well, last year was my first thon because my freshman year was COVID. Yeah. Um, so last year was my first thon. I went the first day um, and then I think I went home. And then I went the second day. I think I did like maybe around 30 hours, yeah. maybe like 27 to 30. I think I'm going to probably do around the same again um, just because I'm in one of the events um, during Thon. Um, but I normally do 46 Live, which is like the live stream. And I'm a host for that. But um, yeah, so throughout the day I'm doing that. But I think I did around like 27 to 30 last yeah. year. Yeah, and I think it's, like, for the people that aren't dancing, I think it's good to, like, kind of go home and get some rest so that you can, like, when you come back, you can be sharp for the people that are doing the 46. So that, like, kind of like an energizer. Yeah, because, yeah. like, if you're also delusional and tired, you can't help the people that are, you know, dancing yeah. and are also delusional and tired. Yeah, so. well, I say we, we, we wait to get into everything. But, guys, welcome back to the Brad Crouch Show. Again, I'm going to keep saying it. We just keep ripping pods, so I don't know what episode number this is. Uh, but today, Aeneas couldn't make it, so we have Miss Destiny Sanchez. Destiny, how are you feeling today? I'm doing good. Excited to be here, for yeah, sure. Yeah, excited to have you on as well. And then we have a special guest, the one, the only, Mr. Tucker Haas. Tucker, how are we feeling? Yeah, we're doing good. Uh, it feels like it's been a long time coming. We've been uh, talking about this since, what, last semester, probably? Yeah, like so. last semester, and... We're here. We're here now, so you know, we're ready to get into it. Tucker has an amazing story. He's been inspiring, you know, people out there just from, you know, his story of, you know, getting diagnosed with cancer at such a young age and being able to battle it, fight through it, and now being a student at Penn State, going to be dancing in Thon this year. Yep. Dream come true. I mean, I, I remember my freshman year at Thon, I was... I stayed the whole time and there was a point where I was extremely delusional and um, you were given a speech on stage. Tucker was giving a speech on stage in front of everyone as a freshman. And I just remember I started having tears just like coming down my face and it just like, it touched me and you know, I'm really excited to have you here and really just dive into your story and really just, you know, hear everything and the battles that you've been through and what you're going to be up to next in the future. Yeah. Uh, so again, thank you for having me. Like I said, it's been it's been a long time coming. We've been trying to plan when it would uh, work out for both of us. Um, but yeah, I was diagnosed with uh, a rare form of cancer in 2002 um, when my mom was rocking me to sleep one night on a Friday evening after school. Um, she found a bump behind my right earlobe. Um, being the overprotective mom, the new mom with her firstborn, um, she wanted to you know go get it checked out. Uh, so that Saturday morning, we went to the local pediatrician. Um, they were like, ah, this is a little weird. Sent us to the local hospital in New York, PA, where I'm, which is where I'm from, uh, to have tests done. And by Monday morning, I was in the Hershey Medical Center, which now it's the Penn State Hershey Children's Hospital. Um, and it's Monday morning, and I was diagnosed with cancer. So it all happened pretty, pretty quick. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, we'll probably get into my, yeah, the rest so of my story. Kinda, soon, yeah, I mean, just talk to me about the journey. Like after <laughs> you get diagnosed, you're two years old. Like, do you know, did you know what was going on? Um, not at the beginning for sure. Uh, obviously being a two year old, um, you really don't know, you know, what's going on. You're just a kid. You're, you know, playing with your toys and you know, you're not going to school. You don't really have a routine yet. Um, which is one of the big things I think that. I didn't really realize. Um, so going through cancer, the start of my journey, um, I was diagnosed to the right side of my face um, when my mom was rocking me to sleep and found it. Um, so I had a sarcoma, which is a soft tissue tumor. Um, which it, it's, you know, kind of, a, you know, golf ball sized, uh, quarter sized um, to the right side of my face, as I said. And 
the only thing that would really work for that was radiation, um, which is a 45-minute-a-day uh, beam of radiation light that's directed to the side of your face, um, which in my case it was. Um, so through the first two years of my treatment, um, I had it to the right side of my face, and I actually had 77 radiation treatments, um, which at that point in your life as a two-year-old is like three, four, five times the lethal limit of what you can physically endure. And for people that don't know what like radiation treatment is, can you explain that? Yeah, so radiation is a very, very bright beam of radiation light um, that kills off uh, tumors um, or anything cancerous. Um, so yeah, that's basically what radiation is. When um, did you kind of realize the capacity of what was happening to you and your family? You know, you, it happened at such a young age. And like you said, you didn't really know what was going on. So when do you feel like you realized what the capacity of what was happening? Yeah, so kind of keep going along here with my journey. Um, Dinos 2002, as I mentioned, and actually battled cancer uh, four different times throughout my life. Um, so from the original diagnosis, uh, they sent me into remission uh, for a short period of time. Um, and then that same bump actually came back to the right side of my face. Um, so At what age? Uh, three. Um, so came back to the right side of my face. Uh, they did more radiation, which is, includes in that number of 77 treatments. Um, then it actually went away again. And this time it came down and spread to uh, my right lung. Um, so through that time, they removed my um, upper and middle lobe of my right lung. Um, so basically, you know, only have one lung with a portion of my right one. Um, they To get to the lung, they actually had to remove my eighth right rib um, on my right side. Um, so it's kind of cool if you feel right here. You can feel that. I'm missing a rib. It's like right here. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah. There's nothing if you guys see Tucker, ask him the feelings. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah, so <laughs> that's kind of, um, it's kind of cool because people don't know this. You don't see this unless I, I share it. Um, but to kind of go back to answer your question, um, I really think I started noticing like what was going on at the age when I had a routine of, you know, going to either preschool or kindergarten. Because, like I said, as you're a kid, every day is different. One day you're playing with this toy, and the next day you're playing with a different one. But once you start having a routine where you're going somewhere every day, and then you notice some days you're there and some days you're not, um, where your peers and the kids in your class are going every day, then that's kind of when you, you know, realize that your life's a little bit different, you know, from everybody else. Yeah, and this is going to be your... 20th Thon, correct? Yeah. So you've been involved wow. with Thon for a while now. So yeah. Thon has a big, is a big piece of your heart. Yeah. Can you kind of talk about Thon and when you actually got involved? Yeah. So part of going through treatment at uh, the Hershey Medical Center, I always call it that. I know it's not the right name. They change it so many times. Yeah. Um, but that's what I call it because yeah. that's where I went. Um, so Hershey Medical Center, the Penn State uh, Hershey Children's Hospital. Um, what they have is a, a foundation called the Four Diamonds. Um, and it is the most incredible foundation that I think will ever exist on this planet um, because it, you know, helped save my life. Um, so the Four Diamonds covers um, childhood cancer patients that go through treatment at the Hershey Medical Center. The main way that th uh, the Four Diamonds gets their money and their, the way to, that they can help these children is through the Penn State Thon. Um, so Thon is a 46-hour, no-sitting, no-sleeping dance marathon that takes place uh, at the Bryce Jordan Center here in State College at Penn State, um, and usually the third weekend in February. Um, about 15,000, 16,000 students basically pack the BJC um, to help fight for the lives of children that they probably will never get to meet, which is honestly incredible, and it, it speaks volumes to the, the people like go here to Penn State. Um, so anyway, when Thon donates all this money to the Four Diamonds, the Four Diamonds covers every single cent of any medical bill that any child going through cancer at the Hershey Children's Hospital will ever receive. So your see. parents didn't have to pay a single medical bill? My parents never paid a cent for any of the treatment that I went through at the Hershey Medical Center at Penn State Children's Hospital. So that Incredible. is wild. 
Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about, you know, all these college kids for these many years, they could be doing a lot of other things with their time and they spend this the entire year raising money. And each year they keep breaking that barrier of how much money they've raised. Like how, how does that feel for you? And now you are part of it as well. A part of the whole ride, the whole mission throughout the whole year. Like how does that feel to you that all of these college kids are coming together for this cause yeah i mean it's pretty cool i I felt really at a young age um i was adopted um by ato and zeta uh the fraternity sorority organization in 2004 2004 so yeah. you were four i was four yep got it yep so i was so four you were involved with thon starting at the age of four yes yep got it. so thon 2004 was the you know the first one that i was with uh ato and zeta um, so I was adopted into their organization, and basically what that means is the organizations here at Penn State have the ability to adopt these Don children um, to focus, you know, their time and effort to, you know, be there for them. Um, and since 2004, I felt like I've had older brothers and sisters, you know, along the entire journey. Um, and it's it's been an incredible experience, the things that these kids have, have done for me, Um you know, or, or why I'm here at Penn State or, or why I'm, you know, able to be in the position I am and want to be in the position I am. Um, because, you know, when you have a history with cancer, you know, sometimes you can want to put that away and it's a different part of your life and, you know, move away from that. Whereas they really showed me that I can embrace, you know, what I've been through and now help other kids that are going through, you know, what I went through. Yeah, what has kept you, like, kind of motivated throughout this whole entire journey? Because... You know, going through something like you have you have can be tough, especially at such a young age. So what's kept you, like, motivated? What has given you, like, hope? Yeah, uh, that's, you know, there's a lot of different ways, you know, I could take a question like that uh, because... Take it any way you want. <laughs> there's just so many different pieces that go into that. You know? I want to hear all of it. Uh, so first, I would say, going back to AT and Jada, since 2004, these kids would come to my house probably once a month, stay for the weekend, and, you know, just hang out with me. You know, these college awesome. kids that are coming to Penn State, yeah, you so know. You you're, were, like, looking up to these yeah. kids. Like, you're like, I want to go to Penn exactly. State one day. Like, I want to yeah. I want to be like them. Exactly. And, you know, as I got older, you know, it changed from, you know, playing with toys. And then, you know, when I was 10 or 11, we'd be playing water pong out in my garage, you know. <laughs> so, you know, they, my, my parents and my mom especially always says, these are the kids that told me taught me how to do the – the wrong things the right way um, <laughs> at a young age. So, you know, I, I just grew up a lot faster, you know, going through everything that I've gone through. Um, but just having these kids to look up to, uh, you know, my life wasn't always easiest with, uh, you know, peers, you know, just because the way I look and, uh, you know. I, well, what, like, at a certain point in your life, were you insecure about the way you were looking? Yeah, and I think... You know, there's always that piece of me that's like, I, I I know what I look like, you know, and some days you're really confident about yourself, and then, you know, you're going to have days where you're you're struggling to, to feel confident about yourself, and um, the past couple of years, you know, it's definitely, I think, gotten better, just because I'm at a place where I feel more accepted, and, and, and I feel like this is my home, and I could, you know, go up to anybody at P-Man and say hi, and, you know, I'm going to make a friend, yeah. whereas, like, you know... In middle school and high school, the beginning of high school, it was, you know, hard because I thought, you know, everybody in my community knew me as the kid that went through cancer. Um, so that that made it a little bit more difficult. Um, but, yeah, so that's, I guess, you know, a big part of it. Yeah. yeah. Throughout your journey with ATO and Zeta, um, do you still keep in touch with a lot of those people that were in your journey in the beginning, middle, and till now? Yeah, so actually kind of crazy. Um, I sent Brad the video today. Um, CBS, uh, the I news station. I just watched station. that interview today, too. <laughs> <laughs> they came up in uh, October, and they did a story on me about my, you know, 20th-thon, about, you know, what I've been up to and helping out with, you know, thon and the Four Diamonds and stuff for the last couple of years. Um, and in the video, they actually surprised me with, I think it was probably five or six guys that danced and graduated from Penn State in, like, 2010. You know, guys that, like, when, when I finally got to that stage, those are the guys that we were in the garage with, you know, and yeah. playing water pong, and um, those are the, those are like, 
I mean, I, I remember them all from the whole way when I was four. But that group of guys is, you know, really special. And, you know, seeing them come back and some drove a couple hours just to be here for an afternoon, um, that, that still just means, like, knowing that I made such an impact on their lives and now they're 30 years old with two kids and a wife that they're still going to take off from their day job, drive up to state college to, you know, just be with me for a couple hours. Um, so yeah, that's probably the, the group that I remember the most. And then after that stage is when I would start coming up here to visit. And then obviously remember those guys cause I would, you know, crash on the couch at, you know, one of their apartments when I would come up, um, throughout high school. I mean, so when I was going through the struggles with, you know, people in high school. Well, just, what, were, what were the struggles in high school? You know, just getting teased, just, you know, based on the way I look. And, you were teasing you in high school? Yeah. Like well, what? more more like, saying, probably like middle school. What were they saying, doing? Just, you know, I only have one lung, so I don't, I can't, you know, always keep up with everyone. Um, so a lot about that and just, you know, the way I look and just How are you being left out. That? I really struggled. I actually moved schools um, after uh, or in the middle of my eighth grade school year um, to a different school. When I moved to that school, it was a little bit better because I had a cousin or two cousins that went there. So I could always kind of, you know, be around them. Um, And I I did make some really awesome friends in high school. Um, You know, I still talk to a lot of them nowadays. Um, But that middle school, those middle school years were really, really tough. Looking back at those years, um, what kept you going? You know, you ha- you knew that um, you could have the opportunity to come to Penn State and um, give back to th- the same cause that so much has been given to you from. What what kind of kept you going in those tough times? I mean, I think it's just, you know, the guys that yeah. were in ATO and the girls that were in Zeta, uh, like I said, like I could literally text them whenever I wanted to and, you know, shoot them a FaceTime or, you know, take the trip up to State College to visit them whenever I wanted. Um, and then, actually, a buddy of mine, probably not even a buddy, I can't say, it's like, literally my brother, not my blood brother, but my best friend, uh, his name is Robbie Schweitzer. He actually um, went through cancer, um, came to Penn State, and then joined ATO, and then danced. He danced in our freshman year in 2020. Wow. Um, so I always had him, you know, as an older brother that I could always talk to and he lives like 30 minutes from me away from like at home. So, you know, having him too, um, but just, you know, I could always escape, you know, getting out of that time because I knew once I got out of school that I had a whole family of, of brothers and sisters that I could, you know, always, you know, talk to. Yeah, and Penn State was the the school that you wanted to go. Like, this was, like, your ultimate dream. I knew really early on that I was going to try my hardest to come to Penn State. Um, And, you know, I worked hard in high school. I had fun, but I also worked hard. Um, And then, you know, obviously sent my application in. um, And then, you know, I heard back. It, It was, I think, January, I want to say January 30th, so like three days ago, um, like what, five, two, seven years ago now, yeah. or no, not seven, five years five. ago, five years ago now, yeah. um, that I got into Penn State, and I think I accepted right away, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm man. coming here, um, and then from that moment on, I was like, where can I get, how can I get involved in the thon? Yeah, so walk me through that, like you, so now you get the Penn State, you're a freshman, what was... Well, first off, how was that transition from high school to now actually being that college kid that yeah. you're always looking up to? Yeah. Um, so that that was a cool transition for me. Um, my During my high school career, I was, like, one of the leaders of my high school's mini-thon. Um, so my sophomore year of high school, I was uh, one of the captains, and uh, we raised $65,000, wow. which was awesome. Uh, I became one of the overalls, uh, overall captains my junior year. We jumped from 65000 to 112000 And then my senior year, I was the overall again, and we jumped from one twelve to one forty three. Um, so oh, just wow. having that, you know, that was basically my practice for coming to Penn yeah, State. No, that, that's, that was, uh, that's great practice yeah, right there. So, you hands know, on. Having the hands-on practice where I was able to, you know, rally a school that wasn't always, you know, super involved in, in their, in their mini-thon to then being one of the most, 
biggest fundraising schools in in Minithon that, that does a Minithon. Yeah. Um, so that that was pretty cool. Um, and now then freshman. what? Like now, like into like yeah. freshman year. And then now coming, you know, to Penn State as a freshman, uh, I had my first semester was was pretty fun. Um, I knew I could, you know, go over party too much. I knew I could go to the house whenever I wanted. <laughs> um, I knew all the guys in the house because, you know, my senior year of high school, after my mini-thon, I think I was up here every weekend until graduation. So I was coming up, you know, Thursday night for our socials because we yeah. always social okay, Thursdays. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this was like senior year of high school. And then, you know, coming in, it, it was weird, you know, because I was like, I'm not technically in ATO yet because uh, obviously you can't rush till the spring here at Penn State. Um, so fall, I basically was a brother. I went to ATO's formal and, you know, it was just... As a freshman. Every, yeah. It was just all normal to me. I went to the, the winter one. Yep. And then the spring rolls around and it was that question was... Um, I, I got asked the question, do you just want to be an ATO or do you want to go through the process that, you know, is going to make you closer with all the guys that that you're going to be graduating with. And I chose to go through the process because I, you wanna, me and my life, I don't want things handed to me. Um, that's you want to earn it. I want to earn it. So I went through the, you know, the process of joining the fraternity of ATO with uh, 29 other kids in my PC who are now, you know, the kids I know are going to be right by my side through the rest of my life, which is, you know, really awesome to know that, like, once I leave here in a couple months, I'll always have those guys. Um, so that's pretty special. Um, so I went through the process, and then, uh, sophomore year, you know, just did as much as I could. Um, I was on a committee freshman year and sophomore year through internal thon. Junior year, uh, I became the family relations chair for ATO and Zeta. Well, I was the one for ATO. The Zeta has one as well. Um, and this... this Not this year. This, well, finishing up my junior year, um, that was probably the coolest experience ever being the family relations chair for ATO. Um, the fall of my junior year, we were actually able to adopt a, another family into our organization. That's awesome. Um, and I was able to kind of take the lead as being the FR chair. Um, and it just so happened that we got a two-year-old kid with a bald head that also had a super rare form of cancer. Um, so the connection between my story and his story was just you know, incredible, and if you take a picture, they they did, they showed a picture, but if you take a picture of me and him as a kid, you know, at the same age, you'd probably mix us up. Absolutely meant to be, for yeah. sure. So that was, you know, that experience, and now, you know, growing with their family through the last year has How's been... How's that experience it's, been? it's incredible, and again, that just gives, you know, another motivation to, you know, keep doing what I'm doing and raising more money, and then after Thon last year, I became the one of the Thon chairs for ATO, um, and now just on the grind to you know keep raising more money and do as much as we can you know for Thon. Yeah, now you're gonna be actually dancing at Thon this year. Yeah, can you talk me through your emotions about that. It's I know you have a, a whole lot of emotions about this. Yeah, I mean, when when I realized at a young age that I was gonna come to Penn State and I wanted to be like those kids. I was like, I want to dance, you know, I want to have that, that number, that bib on my shirt, uh, and I want to represent, you know, not just myself, but my organization and this entire university. Um, so I knew, I knew really early on that this is what I wanted to do. Um, and then fast forward to, you know, freshman year, um, or sorry, senior year of high school, and I got into Penn State, and, I, you know, I told myself, and I was like, I'm going to dance in Thon one way or another. I don't care if I'm dancing by myself. I don't care if it's with ATO. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to find a way to, to dance. Um, and luckily, I was, you know, blessed enough to be able to join ATO and go through the three years of the hard work because we're such a, you know, great organization, in my opinion, that it you have to be a senior to really hold a position because there's so many kids that, that want to do it every year. Uh, so I was lucky to be elected as a THON chair for this year, which uh, once you're a THON chair for our organization that wraps you in as, as a dancer. Um, so when I was elected, I realized it finally was going to happen. Um, but now, I mean, here we're, what, 16 days from THON? Um, and I 
don't know how to feel <laughs> because I've been looking forward to this for, you know, 20 years. But then after this, it's like, you know, what's next? Um, so I'm, I'm super excited. I know it's going to be a very emotional weekend. I know there's a ton of alumni that are going to come back and see me. Uh, I know I'm going to, you know, cry probably a ton yeah, of times. Out, yeah. um, but I'm actually speaking as well on uh, Saturday morning. Um, I know you guys are also, you know, going to be doing um, some things at Thon Weekend. So I'm sure I'll see you guys throughout the weekend. Um, But, yeah, it's just it's going to be very surreal. Um, I'm probably going to be numb the whole time, which (laughs) might actually help me, you know, (laughs) standing 46 hours. Um, But it's just been such a long time coming, and I'm really, really excited. Yeah, what's your mentality been? throughout your whole entire, like, life journey? Like, mm. ha- what has, what has, in- what have you instilled, like, in yourself that literally gave you hope to, like, get through all of schooling and then go to a school like Penn State, be able to join a fraternity, like, live, a like, a normal life, yeah. you know, after everything you've been through, and I'm sure doctors were doubting you at some point. I don't, like, people might have been like, oh, we, we don't know about Tucker, and now you're here gonna be dancing at dawn like what what's that mentality that you have that you can like share with people that can yeah. motivate and inspire them yeah uh that's there's a you know it's a long you know a lot of stuff i can get into there yeah, i want to hear everything uh, right. this is uh, why you're here right now We're so get deep you when get deep when you said you know about you not like them not knowing if i was going to make it yep. um That, you know, that always is a thing that, you know, always sits in the back of my mind. When I was going through um, during my second relapse uh, with cancer, my parents actually had to plan my funeral. Um, So basically, no, basically they were like, it's not, it's over, you know, kind of thing. And parents, you know, went through the process of starting to plan my funeral. Um, The period of time that they gave me to, to be here passed and... You know, I'm still here, but, you know, having that that thought process kind of in the back of my head all the time, it's, you know, something that gives you that motivation um, because I really, really honestly shouldn't be here. A couple of years ago at Thon, it's a really cool story. Um, What age age, uh, was that? When I was, when they told me about For your second relapse, yeah. Yeah, probably three years old. Oh four years goodness. old, in, bet- in between three and four, yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of years ago, I think I was still in high school. Um, my doctor, or one of my doctors, was at Thon, um, and he saw me, you know, playing at around with one of our other Thon ch- children at Thon, and he came up to my parents, and it's a really cool story. I don't know how many people know this honestly, um, but he looked at my mom and dad and said. Your son's a miracle. He was honestly a save. We never thought that he would be, you know, where he's at now. And, you know, when my parents heard that, they, you know, broke down because, um, you know, now they're still their oldest son, you know, but still their baby boy that's going to, that, that's at Thon and, and is now coming to How does to that Penn make State. you feel? Which part? Just like every, like all of it. That. Yeah. Um... It's a crazy feeling, honestly. Um, you know, you can't really, uh, like, expect that to happen in your life, I guess. Um, and at that point, when he told us that's my parents, I was so far removed from my treatment that, you know, that thought's not always with us every day. But, you know, when you hear something like that, it's just, you know, to, to know that you're, you're really a save and that, it wasn't supposed to be the way it is, you know, it kind of just hits you. And because of all of this, what is like your perspective on life? Because I feel that so many people will overcomplicate things. So many people will and moan about dumb. Yeah. Shit, right. Sorry. I, I had to curse. I know you guys got to bleep that out. But so many people just complain about dumb. Shit. And here you have Tucker yourself that have gone through all this, like, what's, like, your perspective? And, like, what can you, like, tell people to, like, stop? And always bring a moan and just be grateful that you're here. Yeah. um, I I think, you know, part of that really stems from, 
you know, some of the experiences that I've gone through, you know, obviously in my journey with cancer. Um, but through that journey with cancer, uh, you know, I, I lost some friends that I went through cancer with. Um, and just, you know, living every day kind of for them, um, you know, in honor of them. And, you know, you, you, you want to make them proud. Um, so that's, that's a big thing. And that's, you know, kind of where, you know, the way I live stems from. Um, just because it's that just motivation to, you know, get out of bed every day. Um, some days it's early, some days it might be in the afternoon, but, you know, to get out of bed and to, to just enjoy life for what it is. Um, so many people, as you say, like they get so wrapped up in, in little things in life and, you know, they have these goals that are, you know, long-term goals. Um, but, you know, just getting through the day is, is to me, is, is a win. Is a win. Um, because, you know, every every day that you're here, it's, you know, it's a blessing. You got to be thankful that you're here and you're in the position, whatever position it is, that, that you're there. Because no matter what position you are in life, there's always somebody else out there that has it worse than you. And I've, you know, had my back against the wall my fair share of times, you know, going through what I've gone through. Um, but I always knew that there's somebody out there that has it, has it worse than I do. So just, you know having that mentality where you just can't be, you know, afraid to make deci- little decisions because those little decisions are going to be what turn into, you know, big decisions in your life. It's almost like the mentality of you you get to live this life. We get to live this life. We don't, it's instead of, you know, oh, I have to go to school today. No, we get to go to school today um, because not everyone um can get even get to that point and there were people um there's a point in your life where that was a question if you were going to be able to go through the rest of your life and you're doing it in amazing like capacities where you are you know looking at those people that were by your side through that entire process for you and are still by your side and now you get to be by you know, your thon child side where, and also all everyone that's impacted by, you know, the four diamonds foundation. And it's just very inspiring. And it's an important reminder, you know, for everybody that, you know, we get to live this life. We're very blessed to live this life and, um, you know, to not, you know, dwell on the little things too much. Your family must be so proud of you. Like, I'm just thinking about this, like, you're talking about your parents and your family, like, how, talk to me about that impact they've had, like, this whole process that it's been on them, you know, to see Penn State be so supportive of you, supportive of you throughout all of this, and talk to me about your family, like, what, they must be so proud of you. Yeah, so they have been, you know, by my side through, since the day, obviously, I was born, um, Especially, you know, I have a really close relationship with my sister. Um, don't really talk to her as often because she's, you know, down at her college doing her thing and has a great time down there. She's an amazing, you know, little sister. And, um, you know, I was always able to, you know, be there for her as a big brother. But, you know, with a lot of my treatment, she, you know, almost acted like the older sibling for me. Um, so as as much as she's my little sister, I look up to her, you know, so much um how old is she, huh? how old is she? she's 19 right. yeah she goes to high point in north carolina yeah. yeah uh and then you know going through my treatment i was diagnosed like i said 2002 uh, my mom's a school teacher um in our in our hometown in york uh kindergarten first grade she jumps back and forth um but she you know was wanted to be by my side every day she didn't want to work and thankful to thon and the four diamonds without having to pay for my medic- medical bills, she was able to be by my side every day. Yeah. And that's another thing that we don't always see and you don't always know about them, is that people are physically able to take their time away from their job is to spend with their children in what could be, you know, their last time here, you know. Um, so my mom actually slept on the windowsill of my hospital room for the two and a half, three years um, of my treatment, yeah, so at this time, now, now, at, at, when I went to the hospital, it was the Hershey Medical Center, 
there was only one floor of the hospital that was for children. It was the seventh floor, and they had, like, one or two wings of the seventh floor. That's all the children's hospital was. Now, with what Penn State and what, with what Don has done, there's a whole hospital that's, I think, seven, eight, maybe nine floors that's just the children's hospital. So the way that it's grown over the years is just, amazing that's what we always say if i went through it now my mom would have a bed in my room but she had to sleep in the window so um and then super my dad mom. yeah she was literally she's super mom she she's amazing um and then when my dad he still worked and my, my sister was born right when i was diagnosed actually um they, like balance that so my dad was with my sister a lot of the time my grandma would come or my grandma would watch her um when my dad would come into the hospital um but in the hospital room, you're only allowed to have one adult all times, uh, like during the night hours. So he'd go down to the the waiting room and he'd sleep on a chair. So you know, just what they have done, just to be there for me and su- and the support that they've given me is incredible. Um, because my dad could have you know went home, but he wanted to be there in in case they needed me. So they needed him to do something for me. Um, and he would you know if I wanted Wendy's or McDonald's or uh, something. Uh, did you eat McDonald's? <laughs> something from the. Tucker, you eat McDonald's? Dude, at that time oh, in my Tucker. life, at that uh, time no, in my that's life, fair, that's fair. <laughs> I wasn't eating at all. Yeah. yeah. So whatever I wanted was, yeah. you know, yeah. what they gave me. Yeah. Um, well, well, if I wanted a Hershey chocolate bar from the chocolate factory a minute down the road, my dad would drive over there and give me a pack of peanut butter cups. Yeah. <laughs> at that time, it was just, you know. You know, at that like I couldn't just, really like, eat, surviving, so like, just trying to get yeah, whatever anything, I anything you could and get in my system. body, yeah. Um, but my parents have sacrificed, you know, so much for me in my life. Um, it's honestly, you know, incredible. My mom is the most wonderful lady that I promise you'll ever meet. And I'm not just saying that because she's my mom, um, but like we have tailgates every she has season tickets. My parents uh, come up every home game. They throw a massive tailgate for all of ATO and Zeta, whoever wants to come. Um, she makes these, like, pictures of, like, like green tea shots and gummy bear shots and white tea shots. We have, like, five gallons of it for all of oh, us. Mate, my dad's on the grill, you know, making burgers and hot dogs, you know. And, and I think a lot of it, yeah, my mom and dad love to have a good time with my friends. Oh, yeah. But I think a lot of it's every weekend feels kind of like a celebration. Because yeah. they're celebrating, you know, me being a part of this family now as an actual, you know, brother. Um, and and we have we have good times when the the house the house <laughs> parents are in town. We have uh, some good times at you know P Man at Champs and especially always, every every <laughs> Friday Thursday Friday Saturday I always see Tucker at P Man yeah. every time. That's and that's another thing. It's like <laughs> people always ask me why I don't go anywhere else because that when I find a place that I feel comfortable in. Yeah. And a, a group of people that I'm comfortable in, that's, you know, that's mm-hmm. the place I go. And that, that's just how I've, you know, grown up in my life is just finding that comfortability in, in certain things. Um, so, you know, P-Man, I can go and I can dap up Chung on my way in. And then <laughs> I can... Shout out Jake Chung. <laughs> shout out Chung. <laughs> I can go into, you know, I can go up to any of the bartenders and they all know me by name. And it's it's bad now. They all know me by my order, too. <laughs> What's your order? What's your order? It, uh, double rum and Coke's oh. usually the, right. the go-to. But I'm, I t- tequila, te- I'm on a cut right yeah. now, so tequila water. I typically <laughs> don't even have to ask for anything. It's typically just, here, like, I'll take your card, yeah. you know? But And I think that's cool because it's it changed so much for me. Uh, I used to watch these kids, you know, go to the go to the bars when I was younger, and, and now I'm, like, <laughs> joining them, you know? Yeah. And, so it, it, it's it's my journey's been such a full circle experience. I think I think that's literally the perfect way to put it, um, because you know I started on the side of you know being a child, and then I grew up, and they were still there, and then so I got to an age, and now I'm helping you know these children and giving back to the families and the children that you know are like my family. So it's uh it's been a really cool experience being at Penn State. I've met you know some incredible people and. Had some awesome experiences, and I yeah. can't believe my 20th on, my last on, uh, is like 16 days. So. Yeah, what, uh, what what's like your biggest takeaway from this entire journey? Ooh, um, I think the biggest takeaway, 
I think more so like the the not like a physical thing, but just the the idea that you can be who you are in your life. Uh, I think when I was growing up, I'd try to change who I was quite a lot to, you know, fit in with other people. Um, and now I've gotten to the point where I could be, you know, who I am and, and I can be open about, you know, my story. You feel comfortable in your and, own yeah, skin. Yeah, exactly. Finally. You feel comfortable yeah. in it. You know, you finally, I finally got to the point at Penn State, which is why I love it here. And, you know, graduation is going to be, you know, pretty tough because now I'm going to have to go, you know, find that comfortability, you know, somewhere sure. else. Um, which, you know, for a lot of people, it's, I want, it's, it's hard for everyone. I'm not taking that away from anyone because moving is hard, you know, away from your home and stuff. Um, but it takes me a long time to, you know, get that comfortability, like certain places. Yeah. Um, but I knew, like, before I even got to Penn State that I was comfortable because it's been this my, where you always it's been to my be. home, it's been my second home for 20 years of my life, so. That kind of segues into my next question is, where do you see yourself in the future and what do you see yourself doing? Yeah, so, um, that's kind of a, you know, loaded you don't, question. No, saying, you, you don't need to know what, like, what you do. I'm just curious as to, like, what do you want to do? Okay, like, what, what yeah. would, like, the ideal... You, you graduate, what would be, like, ideal for you? The ideal future for me, um, I want to be a motivational, like, public speaker. Um, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I love that. Yeah, I, so... I get so... Bro, like I said, bro, Tucker had me in tears. <laughs> fresh I'm almost in tears right now. I was almost in tears, like, during this whole entire podcast, too. That's why, for, like, ten minutes, I just didn't say a word. I was mm-hmm. just yeah. sitting here and, like... <laughs> your Your impact is going to be incredible. If you were to do that. And I think, what's your thought child's name? Uh, Gus. Gus. Yeah. Like, he is going to look up to you so much. And you're, a lot of kids will look up to you. For sure. I think the cool thing for Gus is, like, I see myself so much in yeah. him. And, you know, the, the kids that, you know, raised all their money for me, their goal is for me to come to Penn State and, you know, be able to experience that. And, you know, now my goal is for Gus to grow up and... You know, he's in remission now, so he's not currently going through treatment, which is incredible. And now, you know, you hope to give him that opportunity to want to come to Penn State and to, to be here. Um, but, yeah, just being, you know, having that, that goal of being a motivational speaker, um, you know, part of my journey. Yeah, while well, I beat cancer when I was seven, uh, I'll be 16 years cancer-free in February 12th. Um, Let's go. So, yes, yeah, 16, which is crazy. How does that feel? That it, it feels like, a, I was talking to my mom about this the other night, it feels like a lifetime ago. Like, it doesn't even feel, at the same time, it's, you know, it feels like it's been, you know, not long ago because of my involvement with Don still, but in some aspects of it, it seems like that was, you know, the whole, like, a whole past life for me. Um, but the thing about motivational speaking that, like, really excites me um, is that it's not just about, you know, the time that I went through cancer. Um, And a lot of people don't realize this, and this is the thing that, like, I want to open people's eyes to the most, um, is that when your journey with cancer is over and you're not going through treatments anymore, the things that you go through after, you know, your cancer, you know, are not obviously going to harm your body as much, but mentally and physically, you know, takes a toll for the rest of your life. What, what's it, if you don't, if you don't mind asking, like, what are some examples of that? Yeah, so, um, you know, with my tumor being in my face and having the 77 radiation treatments, um, I also had hundreds of chemotherapy treatments. They, I've had so much chemo, they probably couldn't put a number on how many treatments <laughs> I've had. Um, so I have, you know, so much different, you know, I, I've had so many blood transfusions, I've had, you know, two thoracotomy surgeries. Which uh, what's that? It's a, it's a 10-inch incision underneath my right arm. They had to do that when they removed my, my rib and my lung. Um, but on the other side of it, like, w- with that, with all that, is, you know, the mental health aspect of it, you know, the anxiety that, you know, you kind of face, um, you Wait, know. Talk me through that. It's just, you know, when you're in a place where you're not comfortable, 
not, like when I'm not comfortable, I get very anxious. Um, and you know, just in situations where, like I said, like again, I'm not comfortable. It's hard for me to, you know, be 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 there physically or be there mentally. Um, and, and you know, when I'm in a place I'm not familiar with, like I, I don't always. I'm not who I am. Yep. I try to act. I try to put up a front. I try to act like a person I'm not. Um, so just, you know, that kind of anxious and, you know, another way of that is kind of just like, you know, I've had a lot of friends who have been re-diagnosed late in their life. Um, there's, when you have cancer, uh, having like secondary cancer is, is pretty common, especially for what second, like having it later on in life. Yeah. Yeah. Coming back from what you had in the past. Um, so, you know, always having that kind of thought in the back of your head. Do you where, have that thought? Like, do you ever have that? Like, I mean, I'm sure. Not every day. Um, but, it, it, you know, it comes and goes. Um, How do you, like, fight through that thought? You know, it, again, it's just when I'm going through, you know, time where I'm, you know, going through, like, depression and, and having my anxiety, it's just going back and thinking about the children and, like, all of my friends that I lost through my life. And, you know, like, I guess, what, three days ago now or two days ago, um, Monday um, was the three-year anniversary of one of our Thon children who passed away. Um, her name was Joyce. Um, so this time, like, January and February, um, every year in my life are, like, super difficult months um, just because, you know, I lost one of my best friends three years ago and then, a couple weeks later, I'm, you know, celebrating me being cancer-free every year on February 12th, which, at the same time, it's awesome to celebrate, but then it makes you think, you know, I'm here, and there's so many kids that I wish, you know, would be here with me, or, you know, I would, you know, I would do anything for them to be here, um, so it's such a roller coaster of emotions, why you can be so happy, um, during Thon, especially, too, when you, you're raising all this money, you're dancing 46, so many people are there in support of you, but then you also, especially for me, having the thought of, you know, I wish, you know, Joyce was here dancing with me, you know, I wish um, Maddie was here with me. And so it, it's just, you know, always those kind of thoughts in the back of your head. Um, again, it, it's going with the anxiety. It also, you know, comes with the depression side of things sometimes, too. Um, where, yeah, it, it comes off where I'm always, you know, super confident in myself and things like that. But... No one is, you know, and yeah, there might be a couple of people that are super confident in who they are, which whoever you are, yeah, good for you. Like, but you're always, you know, you, everybody has that slight little bit of like, like, am I really, you know, good enough or, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so for me, I, I go through, you know, stages of, you know, going through that where I'm kind of down in the dumps and then I pick myself up and then I'm good for a long period of time. Um, but, you know, always having, you know, the thought of, you know, not almost pretty much not being here, um, you know, that kind of always, you know, sits in the back of my mind too. Do you, are you one to keep your thoughts and emotions in or do you express them and talk to people? Typically, I keep everything in. And why is that? I'm just curious because I'm sure there's other people that are watching this. Yeah. That might be going through it right now. Yeah. And coming from you, especially with everything that you've been through and have going on, especially during these two months. Yep. Like, do you talk about it? Like, for me personally, if there's something wrong with me or I know, like, I talk it out. I yeah. have to. Because if I keep it in, I explode. Yeah. So, basically... For a long time, it was, you know, keep it in till I explode. And then once I explode, I pick up all the pieces, stitch it back together, and move on for however long until I wind up again and explode. Um, but I talk to my mom probably a lot. Um, I used to, you know, go talk to people, um, you know, like therapy and stuff like yeah. that. But for me, I, I didn't like it at all. Why is that? Uh, I always felt that you know, no one could really relate to, you know, my story. Whereas my mom's been my therapist for my whole life. So my mom knows, you know, what I'm thinking, no matter if I'm, you know, speaking to her or not, she knows something's wrong. She can read me, you know, so well at this point. We've spent, you know, pretty much half my, like, 
probably five years out of my life, never leaving her side. Um, so for me, she's kind of my therapist. Um, so I do talk to her, and I do think it's really good for people to let it out. I think people should. Um, and I think it's also, you know, finding the right person to do so. I've let some stuff out to people that I'm no longer friends with just because, you know, you tell them, you tell them too much and then it comes back to bite you in the ass and it sucks. So I really, you know, try to limit it to my mom because I know she'll always be there for me and my sister especially, my dad too. But me and my mom just have that connection that's just, you know, unlike any other. Having that support system for anyone is really important and for it to be your mom is even special she was on the windowsill yeah. for two three years I mean she's been through it all with you um that's like really nice to hear that you know you have that bond with your mom and you know you've gone through that where you've learned okay like these are the people I can trust these are the people maybe I should not say everything to yeah. um so as much like all of your feelings with all of that are completely valid. Do you feel that, you know, what, what kind of, you know, helps you maybe get out of those like lower thoughts and like, you know, does does Thon and the impact of Thon help with that? Does the impact that you, you know, you're making a huge impact just with, you know, your mission. Um, so what kind of helps you, you know, you know, get back up on your feet and, um, you know, keep going. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of a mix of all of each of those. Uh, you know, like, like just getting, you know, text messages from, like, old friends and family that I haven't, you know, talked to. I got a couple texts from buddies from high school that I don't really talk to that much. Just as, you know, we're in different stages and periods of our life. But, like, older cousins and, you know, old friends from ATO and Zeta, just, you know, a lot of different people, um, you know, just reach out to me and are like, hey, you're such an inspiration. And, you know, one of those texts for me, like, goes a really, really long way. Um, when my CBS thing came out in the fall, I had probably 100 uh, Facebook messages from people of everywhere. And, and what's kind of cool is, it's, it's cool, but it's also interesting um, probably 50% of those people that texted me on Facebook, like, whatever, direct messaged me, I didn't even have the app downloaded, <laughs> um, they were, like, telling me something about, you know, how cancer's impacted them, so, you know, when you're, Be able to relate to when you're opening up your story, and then people are comfortable to share that something like cancer has affected their lives, you know that your story is inspirational enough to, like, get people thinking about, situations you know, that they're going through or that they have gone through um so that's pretty cool it also helps like you know having you know buddies so many good good friends at penn state um where that if i'm going through something you know tough um that it it, it that they they know too and if i'm not coming out of my room you know as much as i typically would like they're all gonna come and sit in my room because that's you know the friendships that I've developed. They're they're really good, um, and you know, sophomore and junior year I lived at the fraternity house, and there's never a dull moment you know in those places. So that always kept me busy, you know, it kept me I, kept me out of my room and out of my you know thoughts. And then this year I live with uh, four other guys, so uh, you know. If I don't come out of my room, they're going to bang my door down until I come out. Um, so, you know, just having, using the positives that, that I've, you know, gained over the years, whether it's, you know, friends, family, and then also, like, the impact that my story is making, I think it's it's kind of all three of those. Uh, yeah, I think as we kind of, like, wrap things up, like, we feel like we've been talking for, well, like, an hour already or right around an hour. Um What's like? What are like your hobbies? Like I just want that. Like obviously yeah. we talk about everything, but like, like what are your hobbies? What do you enjoy doing? Yeah. So <laughs> a hobby that I think honestly developed a lot from you know my cancer, um, and then also a lot from the anxiety and depression that I've gone through um, is golf. Mm -hmm. I love the game of golf. Um, I actually had the opportunity to go out to uh, Pebble Beach, California, uh, last summer, and and work at Pebble Beach for four months. 
um, which was an incredible experience. There was uh, like 12 other interns. We had a big house right on the 18th hole of the golf course, and we all would Sick. we all would go to work every day and come home and you know drink until we fell asleep, and then yeah. we'd get up and go to work again. And that was really cool. And I met a couple of people out there. Um, shout out to you know Jack and uh, Zabo. Um, those guys are guys that are, you know, one's from um, Ohio, goes to Ohio State, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> and then the other one, uh, he's from Michigan. Um, but these two guys came out to visit me here. They, oh. you know, flew in. That's and amazing. Like, that's, I have met him over the summer, and now we're guys that are, you know, Josh is going to come for Thon to be there with me that weekend. That's awesome. So it's pretty cool, you know, just going places, especially like out there and leaving an impact on these lives of people out there. You know, I have some of the assistant pros and, I mean, the head pro at Pebble Beach and the the main manager there, they called me to wish me, like, Merry Christmas, and I don't even work there anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, So just, you know, knowing that you leave such an impact on those people um, was pretty cool. Um, But, yeah, I use golf as an escape, you know, kind of from reality. I can go out in a golf course for four hours, you know, put some headphones in and, you know, just be in my own head and be in my own mind. And, you know, yeah, I've, you know, there's sometimes that are really fun in a golf course, but sometimes when I'm, you know, struggling, that's the place where I can just go and, you know, let it all out. Um, so golf's definitely a big hobby of mine. Um, I love, you know, playing as much as I can. I also... Started like a, a a sneaker hobby, okay. um, back like. You want to show off the, the well hookers? these so these are the Don shoes. Show that, put them on the table. Yeah, these are the the there shoes I just got. These are just hookers. They're nothing nothing <laughs> crazy. <laughs> well, um, you're dancing in them, right? But you yeah, I got these to dance in uh, for four to six hours. Again, no sitting, no sleeping. Um, so yeah. they told them. They told me that these were the most comfortable. Um, are they? Yeah, they're they're really comfy. Yo, Hoka, if you're yeah, if, <laughs> if, if if yeah, you want to sponsor yeah, Mr. Brad Kraut and uh, yeah, and Tucker, and me here. sponsor Tucker for uh, um, for him dancing forty six hours. Yeah, we're wearing these forty six hours. <laughs> I'm not gonna sit or sleep. Um, so Hoka, if you're hearing this, you know, hit us up. <laughs> um, but yeah, so definitely, you know, definitely golf, um, and then sneakers, um, and I think honestly, it's kind of crazy because I can relate all of my hobbies back to, you know, what I've gone through. So in the middle school years is when I got into shoes. And that was, you know, when I was struggling with friends because I was trying to, you know, have cool shoes, you know, to to fit in. And then that hobby kind of just took off. And I had a, you know, 40, 50 pair when I was in high school. And then, you know, when I came to Penn State, I slimmed it down a little bit. But, you know, I've always, you know, liked that. And, uh... Yeah, sports. You know, I love any sport, really love playing any sport. Um, and I like playing sports now, especially, too, because when I was younger, I couldn't play them. And yeah. I actually honestly What's really, your favorite sport right now? Uh, favorite sport, you know, I love football, obviously. Yeah, Everybody yeah, loves football. Or what, um, uh, what, what, who do you root for? The Eagles? I'm a Steelers fan. Oh. Um, <laughs> so I know, I know. Everyone's going to everyone's gonna hate. Um, but... That's for my dad's a Steelers fan, so I, I went with, with my dad. Cool, um, and then so you Pat Frymuth fan. I am a Pat Frymuth. I actually you got to meet him? I met him at Thon when I was in high school, I believe. And then actually last this past fall, I saw him at P Man, so I got a picture with him. I got a picture with him. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was cool. And then um, uh, when I was younger, I actually um, went to. I was on a. Fox and Friends um, show in New York, um, and they actually uh, the the host. Um, sh- I had my Yankees jersey on over top, and it was a Derek Jeter jersey. I love Derek Jeter, and she was actually married to Derek Jeter's agent. So fast forward months and months later, we get this big package in the mail, and it's a picture of Jeter sliding into third base at the old Yankee Stadium and there's dirt splattered from like the old Yankee no. Stadium and ever since then I've been like a diehard Yankees fan. That is so, so sick. Oh my I, goodness. Everybody gives I, don't, me, I don't really fuck with baseball yeah. but I'm a big sick. Yankees fan But too. everybody that's... gives me crap because I like the Steelers um, but I, I met their yeah. like met the you know met them so 
Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Do you have any other uh, questions or anything before we? Uh, I mean, up? I'm just like really inspired by your story, and you know, just thinking about like this is just the beginning too. Like where you're going to impact so many kids. Your Gus is going to look up to you like crazy like how you looked up to the kids that you know were by your side through your whole process and you know just how this is your 20th on your senior year like it couldn't be written better um so I'm really excited for you I'm really um inspired by you and you know just keep doing what you're doing because you're impacting a lot of people yeah no thank you and and that's what's, you know, it's cool about this. Like, I, I was really excited to do this, like, with Brad and with you as well. And, um, you know, just it gives me another opportunity to, you know, share my story, out there. my story to more people. Yes. And, you know, just, you know, watching what Brad is doing. I've seen him, you know, on TikTok. He's, he gets so much crap from, you know, so many haters. And, you know, he just, like, we both want to make an impact on the world. And it might be in a little bit of a different way, um, but it all ties together in the fact that, like, it's bringing people you know, up. Yeah, bringing giving people, people up and giving people hope. Um, so I think this has been a, you know, a cool collab, and maybe uh, we'll work something again in the future here. Um, but, yeah, I had fun. Great. Yeah, you have any other, like, lasting words? Stop. Where can they donate? Yeah. This is going to be released. Uh, Wednesday, February 15th, so two days before Thon. Yep. So hopefully we can chop up some clips, get a pretty good push going for yeah. you. You know, I have my own donor job. Yep. I don't know if yeah. that's mm-hmm. you do too. Th- yeah. You Okay. Yep. So where can people donate for Tucker? Yep. For Tucker? So people can go, this is for all of Thon. People can go to uh, donate.thon.org. And once you get to the website, you can search up to the person that you want to donate to. So if you want to donate to me, uh, my goal this year is actually 10000 um, I'm working pretty well towards that. Um, you just type in Tucker Haas, um, and then same thing, whoever you want yeah. to donate to. Same if you'd thing. like to donate to Brad, or, um, donate to him by typing his name in as well. Yeah, so, so you know, appreciate you guys tuning in. Tucker, appreciate you coming on. You almost had me in tears. Like, this was... Yeah. This was awesome, and I really think this podcast will be able to touch a lot of people, and I'm really hoping that, you know, your message and everything that you're doing gets out there. Because, you know, you deserve it, and you have such an amazing story that more and more people need to hear and can be inspired by every single day. And my biggest, like, takeaway from this is just having a different perspective on life. Like, thinking about you, like, Let's say I go to sleep, right? I wake up and I don't feel like waking up in the morning. Literally think of like you and how, you know, you would die to like be waking up, you know, every single day type of thing. And that's, you know, I think what a lot of people need to hear and be grateful that they have another opportunity. They have another day to go chase their dreams and go after what they want in their life. And that's literally what you're doing. Your dreams are coming true. Going to Penn State, dancing at Thon. Like it's literally a picture perfect type of thing. You weren't going to make it through and you made it through yep. and now you're in here. Yep. Now yeah. I, I think it's, I mean, it's awesome. I mean, I always say in the way that I like to, you know, leave things is like cancer does not define who I am. Um, but it has shaped like who I become. Um, cause it, it's, if anybody asked me, anyone, whoever it is, if I could go back and change my life and not go through cancer, I would tell you no, because of all the incredible people that I've met and, all the experiences that I've been able to experience, and I probably wouldn't be sitting here with you guys today yep. if it wasn't for this. That's true. Um, so if you listen to this, you know, just appreciate, you know, life for what it is, and, uh, you know, just be glad that you, you know, you woke up this morning and you have an op- another opportunity to, like, do something with your life, so. Microphone drop.